Lin Xiaoji, at 18 years old, considered herself someone who had seen it all and wouldn't easily be surprised. Yet, on the first day of military training, when she saw the instructor assigned to her class, she couldn't help but gasp. In that instant, a whirlwind of emotions, shock, disbelief, joy, confusion, flooded her mind. She covered her mouth to keep herself from screaming. At an average height, Lin Xiaoji blended into the crowd unnoticed. Everyone was dressed in military training uniforms, and she pulled the brim of her camouflage hat low to hide her face as much as possible. Finally, when the session ended, she retreated to the back of the group, grabbed her phone from the storage area, and rushed to the restroom to call her best friend, Nan Sun. Nan Sun's school had started nearly half a month earlier, so their military training was already over. As soon as Lin Xiaoji's call came through, Nan Sun answered quickly. Lin Xiaoji didn't even wait for her to speak before urgently saying, Nan Sun, Lin Xingha, he's here. It was just after nine in the morning, and Nan Sun, with no classes, was lazily playing on her phone in bed. Although she was awake, her mind was still groggy. Coupled with Lin Xiaoji's anxious tone, it took her a moment to rub her eyes and respond. Lin Qingha? Who's that? Lin Qingha, from Dali Yunnan. The more flustered Lin Xiaoji got, the harder it became to explain. Finally, she gave up and said, the handsome guy we met on our trip to Yunnan, the one you encouraged me to confess to on the way back. Nan Sun paused, then it clicked. She shot up from her bed, holding back her laughter to avoid waking her doormates. What's the situation? Did he come here specifically to find you? If only it were that simple, Lin Xiaoji said, almost in tears. He's our instructor. An instructor, huh? I remember we joked that he looked like a soldier back then. What a coincidence. You better seize this chance and win over that handsome guy. With only a 15 minute break, Lin Xiaoji didn't have time to explain much more before it was time to regroup. When she ran back, Lin Qinghe was sitting on a folding chair chatting with the instructor from the neighboring class. His arms rested on his spread knees, and when he noticed her approaching, Lin Qinghe turned his head to look at her, then stood up, starting to adjust his uniform. Lin Xiaoji froze, her steps faltering. After a moment of hesitation, she braced herself and walked past him, nodding slightly as she said, Hello, instructor. Lin Qinghe responded with a simple, Hmm, as if granting her permission to leave. But just as she took a step away, he added, Button up your uniform. Lin Xiaoji stopped, glancing down. She had unbuttoned one of the buttons on her uniform earlier because it was hot, a perfectly normal thing to do. But now, with Lin Qinghe pointing it out, her already guilty conscience made her blush. Without a word, she quickly buttoned up and hurried back to the group. That morning's training was a torment for Lin Xiaoji, both physically and mentally. The girl next to her kept gushing about how handsome the instructor was, and Lin Xiaoji half-heartedly agreed, all the while thinking, No kidding. If it weren't for that devastatingly handsome face, I wouldn't be in this awkward situation right now. When the morning session finally ended, Lin Xiaoji sighed in relief, dragging her dorm mate to the cafeteria. But as the saying goes, enemies are bound to meet. And just as they were leaving the cafeteria after lunch, they ran into the instructors entering for their meal. Dozens of instructors in their camouflage uniforms marched in two neat lines into the cafeteria. Lin Xiaoji and her dorm mate were stuck at the entrance, forced to wait until the group passed. Worried that Lin Qinghe might recognize her, Lin Xiaoji kept her head down. Finally, as the last of the group passed, she sighed in relief and looked up, only to lock eyes with Lin Qinghe. Startled, she watched as Lin Qinghe raised an eyebrow and smiled. As his hand swung by, he hooked her little finger in a playful gesture before continuing on with the group. No one else noticed his small action, but Lin Xiaoji's face turned beet red. Back in her dorm room, Lin Xiaoji finished washing up and was about to take a nap when her phone buzzed with a WeChat notification. She opened it to find a friend request from Lin Qinghe. When they had parted ways after the trip, 
Lin Xiaoji, had given Lin Qingha her WeChat contact, but after more than half a month with no response, she had given up hope. And now, he was not only her instructor, but also sending her a friend request? What was this supposed to mean? Despite her outward show of indifference, Lin Xiaoji couldn't deny the fact that this man, who had ignored her feelings for so long, suddenly reappearing in her life, was throwing her off balance. After hesitating for a little over a minute, Lin Xiaoji, despite her initial reluctance, accepted Lin Qinghe's friend request. All her steely resolve crumbled in the face of his good looks. Anything you need? If not, I'm going to take a nap. Lin Xiaoji, trying to sound as aloof as possible, sent this message. As soon as she hit send, the typing indicator appeared at the top of the chat, and Lin Xiaoji's heart began to race. She both wanted a reply and dreaded it at the same time. This inner conflict only made her heartbeat quicken. A moment later, Lin Qinghe's message came through. When you kissed me back then, you weren't nearly as reserved. Lin Xiaoji almost spat out blood onto her phone screen. A rush of heat surged to her head, making her ears burn red. She threw her phone down, covering her face in utter embarrassment. It took her nearly five minutes to muster the courage to pick up her phone and reply. That was just a moment of madness. Let's pretend it never happened. Yes, Lin Xiaozi did kiss Lin Qinghe, and it happened during a recent trip. After graduating from high school, finally free, she set off on a solo graduation trip. However, due to her parents' concerns, she had to choose a place not too far from home, Yunnan. From Kunming to Lijong Old Town, she found herself in that ancient city where every house has flowing water, every household is shaded by willows, and the scenery rivals that of Jiangnan. There, she met Lin Qinghe. They had checked into the same guest house, one after the other. After moving her luggage into her room and getting settled, Lin Xiaoji excitedly ran to the balcony, which was filled with blooming flowers. To her surprise, the young man who had registered just before her was standing on the balcony next door. Intrigued by his good looks, Lin Xiaoji couldn't help but steal a few glances at him. However, perhaps her gaze was too intense because Lin Qinghe, who had been looking out at the view, suddenly turned to meet her eyes. Caught in the act of spying, Lin Xiaoji gave an awkward smile and waved at him, as if to say hello. Before Lin Qinghe could respond, she quickly lifted her skirt and dashed back into her room. Not wanting to brave the sun during the day, and since it was her first day, Lin Xiaoji decided to take a nap at the guest house. She didn't wake up until the evening, when she went out for a stroll. As she stepped out, the sky was still ablaze with sunset clouds, and the golden sunlight touched the softest part of her heart. Standing on the steps of the guest house, she stretched lazily, enjoying the moment. The guest house was run by a loving middle-aged couple. The hostess, dressed in a plain long dress, was tending to the flowers and plants by the entrance. As Lin Xiaoji was about to leave, the hostess glanced inside the guest house and called out to her. It's not very safe for a young girl to go out alone at night. That guest over there is about to go out too. Why don't you two go together? Lin Xiaoji turned around at her words, just as Lin Qinghe was coming down the stairs. Hearing the hostess, he looked up and their eyes met unexpectedly. Being a girl, Lin Xiaoji felt a bit shy, especially after what had happened that afternoon. She quickly looked away and said nothing. Lin Qinghe, however, reacted swiftly. After a brief pause, he understood the hostess's suggestion. He walked to the entrance of the guest house and smiled, since the hostess has appointed me as your protector, how could I refuse? I've heard that Sifong Street is quite beautiful at night. Want to check it out? The last part was directed at Lin Xiaoji. Despite her shyness, Lin Xiaoji was bold when it came to romance. She usually faced potential love interests head-on, making her intentions clear and blushing openly. She only hesitated for a moment before nodding in agreement to Lin Xinghe's invitation. Lin Xiaoji stayed in Lijiang for four days, and except for the first day, she spent the remaining three days with Lin Xinghe. They explored Sifong Street, Wangilu Mu's residence, and Beimolongtin Temple together. 
What started as a chance encounter during a trip quickly turned them into inseparable companions in just three days. The hostess, seeing them go out together every day, was quite pleased with the effectiveness of her matchmaking efforts. Lijiang is known as the city of romantic encounters, and the hostess felt a personal duty to uphold that reputation. If she could bring two people together, she was more than happy to do so. During their three days together, Lin Xiaoji learned Lin Qingha's home address and that he was a senior at a military academy. Yet, there was never a suitable moment to exchange contact information. Their rooms were next to each other, and every day, before they went out, Lin Qingha would knock on her door. Lin Xiaoji, understanding the signal, would quickly gather her things and run downstairs. Lin Qingha, usually chatting with the innkeeper, would look up at the sound of her footsteps, greeting her with a smile as she came down. Lin Xiaoji asked about Lin Qingha's travel plans and found out that their next destinations were in opposite directions. This meant that after their Li Jiang trip, they would part ways. Lin Xiaoji thought this wouldn't do. She couldn't let this romantic encounter slip away so easily. The night before she was set to leave, she called her best friend, Nan Sun, and explained everything. As her close friend, Nan Sun came up with a bold idea. Kiss him and run, but don't forget to leave your contact information. If he's interested in you, he'll definitely reach out. It was a ridiculous plan, but Lin Xiaoji decided to follow it. Early the next morning, Lin Xiaoji was set to catch a train to her next destination. A taxi waited at the inn's entrance. Lin Qingha helped her carry her luggage down and put it in the trunk. Lin Xiaoji watched his every move, feeling more nervous than when she used to sneakily read novels during class. After Lin Qingha finished loading the luggage, he turned back around, and that was when Lin Xiaoji mustered all her courage and stood on tiptoe to kiss him. Her original intention was just to kiss his cheek, but Lin Qingha turned his head slightly, and her lips brushed past his cheek and landed squarely on his. The cool, soft touch of his lips made Lin Xiaoji's mind explode like a mushroom cloud. Blushing furiously, she quickly stepped back. Lin Qingha was also stunned, not expecting to be kissed out of the blue. They stared at each other, while the innkeeper, his wife, and the taxi driver all looked at them with knowing smiles. Overcome with embarrassment, Lin Xiaoji hurriedly opened the car door and got in, urging the driver to leave. The driver, suppressing his smile, sighed, Ah, uh, youth is wonderful. With that, he stepped on the gas, and the taxi leisurely drove away. As for what happened next, Lin Xiaoji had no idea. However, Lin Xingha did not add her on WeChat, despite the fact that she had left her contact information with the innkeeper. She had been full of hope at the time, but after waiting for more than half a month, she received no messages, no friend requests, nothing from Lin Xingha. It wasn't until university started that she saw him again, but this time, that heartless guy was her drill instructor. That afternoon, after Lin Xiaoji sent that message to Lin Xingha, she tossed her phone aside. She lay in bed, trying to nap, but her mind was filled with thoughts of Lin Xingha. She tossed and turned the entire time, and by the time the afternoon military training rolled around, she was exhausted. Yawning, she followed her roommates to the training ground, where Lin Qingha was already waiting in the shade. As she passed by him, he leaned in slightly and whispered, Looks like you didn't sleep at all. None of your business, Lin Xiaoji replied, walking on without looking at him. During a break in training, Lin Xiaoji chatted with her classmates and finally got the details on Lin Qingha. He was a senior at the military academy in their city, an academy that had been in charge of her university's freshman military training for years. Back in Lijiang, Lin Xiaoji had seen Lin Qingha's ID, but since the address on it was unfamiliar, she had assumed that his university was far away. Who would have thought the world could be so small? Because of strict discipline, Lin Qingha and Lin Xiaoji rarely interacted. Even eye contact was minimal, Lin Qingha was bound by the rules, and Lin Xiaoji was wary of gossip. University military training instructors are usually strict about not having any physical contact with female students, no one-on-one -on -one meetings, no adding each other on WeChat or QQ, and no taking photos together. 
Though Lin Xiaoji had broken nearly all of these rules, their relationship had to remain a secret. This also meant that while the girls in the class had been drooling over Lin Xinghe's good looks, none dared to make a move and could only sneak glances during training. All the instructors leading their military training were seniors from the military academy, young, full of energy and ambition. Yet, even among them, Lin Xinghe stood out as a focal point. In the evenings, there were entertainment activities after the grueling day of training. As the scorching heat of the day faded, Lin Xiaoji finished dinner and returned to her dorm. She peeled off the heavy, non-breathable camouflage uniform, washed off the sticky sweat, and collapsed on her bed, unwilling to move. Though she usually exercised regularly, the intensity of the military training far exceeded her normal routine. After a full day, her bones felt like they were about to fall apart. She had barely closed her eyes for a short nap before her roommates woke her up. After a whole day in the military uniform, the girls were finally able to wear casual clothes in the evening. They dressed in lighter, breezier outfits, with some bold boys whistling as they passed by. Lin Xiaoji wore a pair of denim shorts, and as she followed her roommates, she too received some rowdy cheers from the boys. Even though Lin Qinghe was an instructor, he wasn't much older than them. Blending in with the boys, you wouldn't have known he was their instructor if not for the uniform. Sitting among the boys, Lin Qinghe was originally looking down at his phone. But when he heard the whistles and cheers, he looked up and immediately spotted Lin Xiaoji trailing behind her roommates. His eyes caught sight of her exposed, fair legs, and his brows furrowed. The boys around him weren't letting up, and Lin Qinghe, feeling a surge of irritation, barked, all male students, attention. The boys, who had been making a ruckus, instantly straightened up and stood at attention, no longer daring to act out. Lin Xiaoji and her roommates were startled by the sudden command and froze in place. Lin Qinghe shot them a glance and said sternly, What are you standing there for? Want to join them? Lin Xiaoji's roommate immediately forced a smile. No, no, we definitely don't want to stand. With that, they hurried away in a rush. Lin Xiaoji was pulled by her roommate, jogging a few steps before she couldn't resist glancing back. Lin Qinghe was standing in front of the boys, giving them a stern talking to, the light casting a glow on his face. The sight brought her back to that night in Lijiang, where the warm and peaceful atmosphere of Sifong Street had turned two strangers into companions. He was supposed to be a passing breeze, yet somehow, he stirred up a storm within her. Under the streetlight, Lin Qinghe was bathed in a soft halo, making everything seem almost unreal. Such a beautiful young man, she thought, as if just a few words from him would make her willing to give him all her courage and the rest of her life. Lin Xiaoji shook her head, dismissing the strange thought. The so-called entertainment activity was nothing more than each class gathering in an open space, with the more artistic students taking turns to perform. Whether it was singing, dancing, or playing an instrument, anyone with a talent could go up and show it off. For those without any artistic flair, they could engage in a sing-off with a neighboring class. For someone like Lin Xiaozi, who lacked any artistic talent, all she could do was be a dutiful audience member, clapping enthusiastically. One girl in their class was egged on by the boys to go up and dance. The crowd around her cheered, and the atmosphere became lively, with everyone's attention focused on the dancing girl in the center. Lin Xiaoji's roommate, who had been sitting beside her, went to the bathroom, leaving the spot next to her empty. Her attention was fully on the dancing girl, so when someone sat down beside her, she assumed it was her roommate returning. They were sitting on a large lawn, and Lin Xiaoji was propping herself up with one hand on the ground. Suddenly, she felt warmth against her hand. The rough, slightly callous texture made her heart skip a beat. She turned her head to see Lin Qinghe's profile. He was looking straight ahead at the performance, appearing perfectly normal to outsiders. However, hidden in the dark, his hand was far from innocent. He had taken hold of Lin Xiaoji's hand. Startled, she tried to pull her hand away. But the difference in strength between them was too great. No matter how hard Lin Xiaoji struggled, Lin Qinghe remained as steady as a rock. With people nearby, 
Lin Xiaoji didn't dare to make too much of a fuss. Failing to break free, she leaned in slightly, lowering her voice as she said, Let go of me. Lin Qinghe's brow twitched, but he ignored her threat, his thumb lightly brushing the back of her hand. No matter how hard Lin Xiaoji tried to maintain her composure, she couldn't hold it any longer. Her face flushed red, and she lowered her head, saying nothing. The lighting on the lawn was dim, and everyone's attention was on the performance, so no one noticed their sneaky little interaction. When the girl finished her dance, the surrounding crowd erupted in applause. Lin Qinghe took the opportunity to let go of Lin Xiaoji's hand and clapped along, his calm demeanor so convincing that Lin Xiaoji almost doubted whether it had all just been her imagination, if not for the lingering warmth in her hand. When the girl finished her performance, Lin Qinghe was called away by another class's instructor. By the time he returned, Lin Xiaoji's roommate had come back from the restroom, forcing Lin Qinghe to take a seat across from Lin Xiaoji. Their gazes occasionally met over the heads of the performers in the middle. Lin Qinghe remained calm, while Lin Xiaoji's nerves were completely on edge. Later that night, back in the dormitory, Lin Xiaoji sent a text message to Lin Qinghe, asking bluntly, Lin Qinghe, what exactly do you want? It didn't take long for Lin Qinghe to reply, What do you think I want? Playing hard to get, huh? Lin Xiaoji sat cross-legged on her bed, her expression fierce, just as her roommate would describe. If you want to kill or cut me down, just do it quickly. After sending the message, Lin Xiaoji braced herself for whatever response Lin Qinghe might give. She was ready for anything, just as she had said, if he wanted to end things, she wanted it to be swift and clean. But after a few minutes, his reply came, light and nonchalant. Focus on the training for now. We'll talk about everything else after it's over. The grueling military training, which had already been exhausting in the scorching heat, became even more unbearable for Lin Xiaoji, with Lin Qinghe adding to her stress. Now, with this vague and frustrating response, she was mentally and physically drained. Focus on training. She wanted to train properly, too. But how could she, when he was the one constantly provoking her? Secretly hooking his pinky with hers when no one was looking, casually sitting beside her during the evening activities, and then subtly holding her hand, how could she possibly concentrate? Lin Xiaoji had already harbored feelings for Lin Qinghe. Every time he got close, her heart would explode with excitement like fireworks. At the same time, she was terrified of this ambiguous atmosphere. What did Lin Qinghe really mean? What was his true attitude toward her? When they had parted ways in Lijiang, fueled by Nanjuan's reckless advice about how a graduation trip should be wild, she had impulsively kissed him. Looking back now, Lin Xiaoji was so ashamed that she wanted to slap herself. Why hadn't she shown more restraint? After leaving Li Jiang, she had waited for Lin Qinghe to contact her. But days turned into weeks, and after half a month with no word from him, she had given up hope. Yet, running into him during the military training reignited her feelings, leaving her in a state of emotional turmoil. Lin Xiaoji spent more than a week in this torment, both physically and mentally. Then, midway through the training, her period arrived. During military training, girls could request leave from their instructors if they were on their period. But Lin Xiaoji's instructor was Lin Qinghe. She already felt nervous just making eye contact with him, how could she possibly bring herself to ask him for something like this? Normally, her menstrual cramps weren't too severe, so she planned to tough it out. However, that day at lunch, she had no appetite and could only force down a few bites of food before giving up. By the afternoon training session, Lin Xiaoji was starting to feel cold sweat trickling down her back. The combination of low blood sugar and menstrual cramps took its toll, and as she was marching, her body suddenly gave out, and she lost consciousness. When she woke up, she found herself lying in the infirmary, hooked up to an four drip. Her class advisor, a female teacher, had stayed by her side since she was brought in. Seeing Lin Xiaoji awake, she couldn't help but chide her a bit. You know you can take time off when you're on your period, right? Pushing yourself like this is only going to make you suffer more. Feeling slightly better, 
Lin Xiaoji smiled weakly and replied, I thought I could tough it out, really didn't want to bother anyone. Sorry for the trouble, teacher. The advisor didn't press further, telling Lin Xiaoji to rest in the infirmary before heading back to her own duties. Being excused from the military training and lying comfortably in bed was a rare treat. Lin Xiaoji turned over and drifted back into a light sleep. She didn't know how long she had been asleep when she heard footsteps approaching. Someone sat down beside her and gently brushed the hair from her face. Lin Xiaoji furrowed her brows slightly and slowly opened her eyes. Her vision was still a bit blurry from just waking up, but she could vaguely make out that the person sitting by her bed was Lin Qingha. She closed her eyes again, feeling much less hostile toward him now that she had just woken up. Even her tone was languid. What are you doing here? Lin Qingha replied, You can take time off when you're on your period, you know. I know, Lin Xiaoji mumbled, still with her eyes closed. But I didn't want to. Because the instructor is me? Lin Xiaoji didn't respond, implicitly confirming his guess. Lin Qingha didn't say anything else. The white curtain used to divide the bed swayed slightly in the breeze, and outside. The doctor was busy with medications, not paying any attention to what was happening inside. The air conditioning was set just right, and the quiet, cozy atmosphere made Lin Xiaoji start to feel drowsy again. She rubbed her eyes, trying to stay awake. She opened them and looked at Lin Xingha's hand resting on the edge of the bed. I don't know how I'm supposed to act around you, whether as an instructor and student or something else entirely. Whatever it is, it just feels off. I don't know if I should like you or hate you. I don't know how to face you. I don't like feeling this way, so I've been trying to avoid you. Lin Qinghe listened quietly until she finished. The room fell silent again and Lin Xiaoji didn't expect him to reply. She turned over to face the ceiling, thinking it might be time to ask him to leave. But before she could, Lin Qinghe spoke up. I'm sorry for making you feel that way. What? Lin Xiaoji hadn't fully processed his words when Lin Qinghe reached out to cover her eyes with his hand. The next moment, he leaned down and placed a soft kiss on her lips. Stunned, Lin Xiaoji's hand instinctively clenched the bedsheet beneath her. A tingling sensation spread from her back throughout her entire body, leaving her dazed. Does this help you figure out how we should interact? Lin Qinghe asked as he removed his hand from her eyes. Lin Xiaoji, however, kept her eyes closed. He chuckled softly, tousled her hair gently, then stood up and left. Lin Xiaoji heard his footsteps fade away, and it was a long time before she finally opened her eyes. She sat up, looking toward the door, then touched her lips, a smile slowly spreading from the corners of her mouth until it reached her eyes. Why didn't you contact me back then? That evening, Lin Xiaoji had excused herself from the evening activities and was lying on her dorm bed, texting Lin Qinghe with an air of indignation. She had once thought Lin Qinghe wasn't interested in her, but now it seemed he was. So why had he made her wait so long, over half a month, without a word? Lin Qinghe responded openly, because I wanted to surprise you. Weren't you surprised to see me on the first day of military training? Surprised? Lin Xiaozi's mouth twitched, more like shocked. Actually, I had already asked the innkeeper for your details, so I knew which school you were attending, he continued. So, I wasn't worried about not seeing you again after you left. When I came to lead your military training, I even swapped shifts with someone after specifically checking which class you'd be in. And as for why I didn't contact you, to be honest, when you suddenly kissed me before leaving Lijiang, it really threw me off. Even though I'm a guy, he paused, I still felt shy. I hesitated for a few days and then decided that some things are better said and done in person. Lin Xiaoji molded over and decided that his explanation was just about acceptable. Then Lin Qinghe texted, I'm missing a girlfriend. Lin Xiaoji smiled, barely containing her amusement. What a coincidence, I'm missing a boyfriend. With their feelings out in the open, the next few days of military training passed with Lin Xiaoji feeling more energized than ever. However, since the school had strict rules forbidding interactions between instructors and students, their relationship had to remain under wraps. But for people in love, 
Just catching each other's gaze across a crowd was enough. Of course, secrets are hard to keep, and despite their caution, they were eventually found out. One evening during the entertainment activities, Lin Qinghe sat beside Lin Xiaoji again. The bushes behind them offered some cover, so they boldly held hands, only to be spotted by the regiment leader passing by. He didn't call them out immediately, but coughed to catch their attention. As soon as Lin Xiaoji and Lin Qinghe let go of each other's hands in a panic, the leader's face darkened, and he called Lin Qinghe away. The other students were focused on the performances in the center of the circle, unaware of what had just happened in the corner. Before leaving, Lin Qinghe had told Lin Xiaoji, don't worry, but she wasn't naive. She knew how serious this was. The saying, military orders are like mountains weighed heavily on her mind, and now it felt like a mountain was pressing down on Lin Qinghe. The moment Lin Qinghe was led away, Lin Xiaoji couldn't resist following them. The regiment leader took Lin Qinghe behind an empty school building to scold him, and Lin Qinghe stood quietly, taking the reprimand without complaint. Lin Xiaoji, hiding at a distance, couldn't hear what was being said and could only worry in silence. Lin Xiaoji couldn't bear the thought of Lin Qinghe being punished and, driven by a protective instinct, she weighed the pros and cons before charging forward with the bravery of a hero going to battle. She positioned herself between the regiment leader and Lin Qinghe. Regiment leader, I understand you have your rules, that instructors and female students can't have inappropriate relationships, but when I started liking him, I didn't know he was an instructor. To me, he's just the boy I like. Even if he's an instructor, even if he's a soldier, doesn't he have the right to fall in love? Lin Xiaoji mustered up the courage to say a lot, but it didn't seem to have any effect. The regiment leader continued to glare at her, his face as stern as ever, and even Lin Qinghe remained silent. This was the calm before the storm. The more Lin Xiaoji thought about it, the more panicked she became, and the more she panicked, the less she could control her words. Regiment leader Lin Qinghe and I met during the summer break, and I already liked him back then. Call it love at first sight or being attracted to his looks, whatever it was, she blurted out. In my eyes, he was someone I liked first and only then my instructor. If you're going to punish someone, punish me. I was the one who pursued him first. With a look of complete surrender, she stood in front of the regiment leader, shielding Lin Qinghe behind her. The regiment leader couldn't help but be moved by her protective stance. He sighed, unable to maintain his stern demeanor and addressed Lin Qinghe. She's your responsibility. Take care of it yourself. Lin Qinghe couldn't hold back his laughter any longer. He placed a hand on Lin Xiaoji's shoulder, encouraging her to relax. It's okay. I've already explained everything. Lin Xiaoji let out a deep breath of relief, her body suddenly going limp. If Lin Qinghe hadn't been holding her, she might have collapsed right there. Since Lin Qinghe said everything was fine, it meant the regiment leader had let them off. Lin Xiaoji regained her composure and nodded slightly to the regiment leader, saying, Thank you, regiment leader. The regiment leader gave her a brief glance and said, After the military training, don't call me regiment leader anymore, call me uncle. Ah. Lin Xiaoji was stunned. Lin Qinghe explained, He's my uncle. You uncle. Lin Xiaoji felt like a thunderbolt had just struck her. Recalling the things she'd said to protect Lin Qinghe, she was mortified. This was an elder. How could she have said such things in front of him? And Lin Qinghe hadn't even stopped her. She pinched Lin Qinghe's waist and hissed, Why didn't you tell me earlier? Lin Qinghe, stifling his laughter, replied, I couldn't stop you and besides, I didn't know you liked me that much. Overcome with embarrassment, Lin Xiaoji covered her face, kicked Lin Qinghe lightly, and after saying goodbye to the regiment leader, she quickly fled the scene. On the final day of military training, Lin Qinghe was given a farewell party on the large lawn by the classmates. Having shed his training uniform, Lin Qinghe appeared more spirited and full of youthful vigor, blending seamlessly with his students. He no longer seemed like their instructor, and the boys relaxed, engaging in playful antics without hesitation. Lin Xiaoji sat with her roommates, watching the commotion. 
Amidst the chaos, someone called out, Instructor Lin, do you have a girlfriend? If not, our class's girls can choose one for you. Sitting on the grass, Lin Qinghe answered with a smile, I have a girlfriend, so no need to choose. Lin Qinghe and Lin Xiaoji had kept their relationship so well hidden that even their roommates were unaware. Some girls had harbored secret crushes on Lin Qinghe, and now that he had announced he had a girlfriend, everyone was curious and began to press him to reveal her identity. The crowd grew noisy, and Lin Qinghe's gaze swept through the crowd, settling on Lin Xiaozi. Feeling self-conscious, Lin Xiaozi quickly averted her gaze. As the boys continued to make a ruckus, Lin Qinghe stood up and barked, Attention! Stand straight! At his command, everyone quickly stood up and arranged themselves in military formation, assuming they had angered him by pressing about his girlfriend. The noise died down. Lin Xiaozi, however, felt something was amiss, suspecting Lin Qinghe of misusing his authority. As expected, Lin Qinghe then declared, At ease, stand straight. My wife, step forward. The first two commands were followed without question, but the last one left everyone puzzled. The crowd stared blankly at Lin Qinghe, who was smiling with an affectionate look towards Lin Xiaozi. The students, understanding Lin Qinghe's hint, realized that his girlfriend was among them. They started to cheer, eager to see the face of the instructor's girlfriend. Standing in the midst of the crowd, Lin Xiaoji looked at Lin Qinghe, her eyes gradually softening with a smile. Some people, just by standing there, become a belief unto themselves, exuding an irresistible charm that draws others toward them. For Lin Xiaoji, Seeing Lin Qinghe in Li Jiang had already prepared her for a lifetime of companionship. Because it's you, I am willing.